In the previous video, I showed you how to connect a microbit to the PC using a serial cable. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the SPI protocol control, a 74HC595, 8-bit shift registers, IC with the microbit. The SPI protocol stands for a serial peripheral interface, was designed by Motorola. Sometimes it's called a four-wire serial bus. It's a synchronized communication that mostly uses in a microcontroller system. The master device, the one on the left, sends clock signals to this so that way it synchronizes data in and out to the slave device, the one on the right. The MOSI is the output data from the master device to the slave device, whereas the MISO is the input data to the master from the slave. The SS, or the slave select, is the output signal to activate the slave device. Here in this picture, we added arrows to, to know um, where goes to where. Microbit provides useful SPI command blocks such as SPI write, SPI set pin, and SPI frequency block. By default, the clock is pin 13, MOSI is pin 15, and MISO is pin 14, as this shows. It's all in highlighted. You can see their jobs. If you want to alter pins, you can use a SPI set pin block and you can change the communication speed by SPI frequency block. Seven four HC five nine five is an eight bit shift register I see that has a similar protocol to the SPI. It needs to input a series of data and clocks, and also needs one final clock signal to finalize the outputs. The output Q0 to Q7 is the state of D0 to D7, respectively. Since the microbit doesn't need any input from the 595, we are not going to use the MISO pin in this project. Read the you can read the data sheet for more information. Here you need to understand the binary number system. Over here is the decimal to binary chart. If your decimal or number is zero in binary, it's going to be zero. If you type in one, the binary will be one. However, two would be one zero. Then three is one one. Four is one zero zero. 5 is 101, 6 is 110, 7 is 111, etc. If you want to light up bit 3 as an example, if you check up above bit 3, you'll get 8. If you want to make Q0, Q2, Q4, and Q6 to be on, or 1. If you check the chart above, again, you'll get 64 for Q6, 16 for Q4, Q2, 4 is for Q2, and one is for Q0. If you add all of them up, you get 85. Over here below the chart, we made it so that way you know a little bit more about it. Eight bits equals one byte in binary, and 255 is the maximum value of a byte. Here's the wiring diagram. We need some jumper wires, 174HC595, 8 LEDs, and resistors. Put everything into the breadboard, carefully using the jumper wire, and make sure that the wiring is correct.
to do the code, we're going to need the um, default box, but we won't be using on start unless you do want on start. Now you can keep it, but for me, I'm just going to keep the forever. This one will be a chasing LEDs. To do the chasing LED, we're going to need two variables. One of them would be called I or or whatever you would like to call it. I'm just going to call it I. And another one, this will be temporary, so we're just going to call it temp. Oh, no, I don't want that. T E M P. Okay. So now that I have two variables, one called I and one called temp, we're going to go grab an set I block to one because we're going to be needing binary to do this. So first it's going to set I to one. You'll see. Then we're going to need a repeat. And we're going to set it to eight because there's going to be eight LEDs. As you will see. Next we're going to go grab temp. Here's why we need temp. Otherwise we won't be able to do this block. To SPI write I. So go two pins, then hit more, SPI right, it's right here. And then we just need I, drag it in there. Because we need temp, because we can't do this. We can't snap it in, because it's a box. So we just do this. Next, we're going to need to set a pulse. So to do that, we're going to go grab a right pin, which can be found in pins. Um, right pin. And then we're going to set it to P16. And we need it to set it to 1. We need a microsecond. We need to go to control and set it to that way to this. Wait a microseconds. We're just going to set it to one because that's how long we need it. And we're going to keep P16. And we're going to change it to zero. Okay. So that's done with the pulse. Then we need to pause as long as you would like. I prefer like 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. I'll go with 150. Okay. And finally, for the last block, we need a set I for variables. So grab the set, change it to I. Go to math to find the multiply. Here's the multiply. Put it in here. Grab I again. And multiply it by 2 because the binary system is doubling or multiplying by 2. Because the first LED will light up 1. Then when it times 2, it's going to go to the, the number would be 2. It turns off. The second LED turns on. You get it from the slideshow. So this is how you do a chasing LED. Now that we've done the code and the wiring, we're going to test it out. So we're going to hit download. It's downloading. It works. It's, it's supposed to look like this. And since all of them are lighting up correctly, it works. That's all for this video. Bye. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so that way you don't miss out on any other videos like this.